Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick look at the forecast as we head into the rest of the weekend, the second weekend of August. Pretty steamy out there and will continue to be so throughout the next several days. We've got a very warm 7 to 10 day forecast for you coming up here in just a little bit, so stick around for that. If you're in town for Elvis Week 2018, welcome to the area. Hope you're having a great time celebrating all things Elvis and keeping an eye on the temperatures out there as we are looking again for some pretty steamy conditions, not only for the next couple of days, but pretty much right into the next several days into the end of the month, pretty much, and not really going to be changing too much anytime soon. If you got any reports from around your area, drop your location and, of course, your weather information. If you've got wind speed, temperature, rainfall amounts from this morning or this evening, please let us know more about what's going on there in the weather page. And, of course, we'd love to see more about what kind of weather pictures that you have out there. Please Please make certain that you drop those to me at aonic underscore WREG3 on Instagram, and we'll have more details on that coming up here again in just a little bit as to what exactly it is that you can do to get your pictures on here. So join us for a little bit more there. Coming up in just a little bit, we have again some pretty hot conditions into the rest of the weekend, and also looking at the potential for some more showers and thunderstorms as we go into the next several days. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Next 24 hours, again, we got that dip coming Coming up into tomorrow morning into the mid 70s only not looking at too much more comfortable conditions out there and pretty easily back in the high 80s to lower 90s as we get into around the area of Sunday afternoon and evening so not seeing a lot of great news there good news on the seismic front again not seeing a lot of earthquakes around the New Madrid fault nothing showing up in the last 24 hours into and around the mid-south area there 95 our high temperature today 92 is where we should be so just a little bit above normal haven't had a great deal of rainfall in the course of the last couple of days, but at least we have got a bit of a surplus out there. So about six and two thirds inches or so, somewhere in there. So doing okay. What does that mean for our burn ban situation? We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. So stay tuned for more on that. The view from out west around the areas close to Yosemite. Visibility is actually improving, getting a handle on the Ferguson fire out west and Yosemite. The Valley Roads will be opening up in the next couple of days on Tuesday, according to the National Park Service, but there is still a ton of smoke all the way throughout the west. Well, that was didn't last long. This was supposed to be a very smoky picture of Grand Canyon National Park, but unfortunately, looks like the National Park Service has taken that down for a little bit of maintenance. Back here into the Mid-South area, a few more clouds in and around the Mid-South for this evening, again showing partially clear skies, not getting again a lot of anything in the way of totally clear skies tonight. You can see some of those clouds lingering back out to the west on our Hilton East Memphis camera, looking back toward the Poplar and Mendenhall Towers area. So again, not seeing any rainfall directly here in the Mid-South area. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in into and around the area for right now and around the rest of the Mid-South. Again, drop your weather reports if you have them. Brent Simmons, humid in Dyersburg. Uh, thank you very much for that. New Bern, Tennessee, clear in 99 degrees. Don Garner, thank you very much for that one. Uh, Michelle Manns, Lightning, I'm assuming they're from around Dyersburg. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And everybody else checking on through uh, for tonight. Paulette Morrow, 83 and nice outside in New Bern. Rain tonight, question mark. And again, starting to see again more of those showers and thunderstorms out there. So yes, there will be more activity like that throughout the rest of the area for later on tonight. Now again, metro area on Storm Tracker 3S radar is not really showing a lot of activity. Some dwindling showers and thunderstorms over portions of northern Mississippi earlier tonight. Likewise, a little bit of activity from Forest City back to around the bend in the Mississippi River between Hughes and Tunica. That was from earlier this evening. Got some stray thunderstorms over portions of northeastern Arkansas, and some of those have again been a little bit stronger, especially the ones right south of the Blyville area right now, going across northern Mississippi County and into around eastern Craighead County, those making their way into around western Lauderdale County in Tennessee, crossing the Mississippi River and I-55 as we speak, as we show you this right now. We have a severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect again for Mississippi County in Arkansas and back into western Lauderdale County in Tennessee. That's in effect until 845 this evening. Again, no reports of any damage or problems on the ground at this time, but we will be watching again for the possibility of more of that. Rhonda Allen Tollison, isn't there a meteor shower tonight? Yes, it peaks 
tomorrow night technically, but we'll talk about the viewing conditions for that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody else across the area. Janine, Janie O'Kelly, nice in Bentonville. A uh, little rainfall. Thank you very much for checking in from there. Sam Dunnigan, hot in Sardis, Mississippi. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And for everybody else who's checking in, again, from across the rest of the area for the time being, Sean M. Swentowski, people act like this is new. No, this has been around for quite some time, pretty much, but uh, if they want to talk about the weather, that's more than fine by me for right now. Nancy Ellen, Ripley, Mississippi, no rain here. Thank you very much for that one. And again, from the rest of the Mid-South area, we'll continue to monitor these thunderstorms. So far, it doesn't look like a problem. Hopefully, these will dwindle by the time they get closer to northeast areas of Shelby County. But if anything changes on that, we'll let you know about that coming up. Temperatures on the heat index scale. Again, the temperature with the humidity equals the heat index or feels like index. And right now, it feels like it's close to 99 degrees at U of M Earth Sciences, upper 80s to lower 90s across much of the rest of the area on live real-time weather net 3. Running the numbers into the rest of the evening. Again, temperatures will be on the toasty side out there throughout the rest of the night, back in the mid to upper 80s across much of the area. And continuing to see those numbers stick around into very early tomorrow. Seeing again the possibility of more of those showers and thunderstorms uh, out into the area tomorrow. Not really seeing again a lot of any chances of showers and thunderstorms again into overnight, but there will be that lingering chance of some activity uh, into and around the area. Theresa Solly, ready for some rain in Covington. Kathy Smith, what's the weather for Iuka, Mississippi? Again, getting more chances of showers and thunderstorms into tomorrow as well. Janet Sullivan Clements, need rain in Nesbitt. Thank you very much uh, for that request right there. David Baxley, we've heard a lot about this year being about a well below average year in terms of tornadoes for the Southern Plains. Curious how Memphis has fared this year in terms of tornadoes above or below average. Uh, Mr. Baxley, good question. National Weather Service has detailed information about that on their web page. You can get there by going to weather.gov, click on the Mid-South area, and then you can find out more through their climatology section, which has a ton of information about what's going on with current trends out there. Now, again, a lot of that is going to be tallied after the season is over with, but if you compare what we've seen so far, and that information is out there as well through those pages, or you can call the National Weather Service as well. So far, if, again, memory serves, I think that it's been a relatively below normal year at this point in time. But once again, we'll be watching that very carefully and we'll give you more updates as we go through the rest of the area. Amanda K. Kaufman, what happened to the 80-degree weather? Uh, don't really have much of that in the forecast, nor have we really had any, but we'll try to scrape some up here pretty soon. Darlene Hill Handley, when is our first frost supposed to be? Again, uh, you can get that information through the National Weather Service on their climatology section. Plenty of information there about what's going on. April Dibiasi, hope I'm saying that right. What time is the meteor shower? Uh, the Perseid meteor shower is going on all throughout the next few days. We just aren't able to see it because of the daytime conditions. But tonight into tomorrow, if it's clear enough, we should be able to see a little bit more of what goes on. But unfortunately, you're going to be looking for meteors between the clouds out there for this evening, and that'll be the best time for that. Temperatures tomorrow, again, back in the 90s with those scattered chances of showers and thunderstorms coming on through, and that'll last into around Sunday evening, quite possibly into very early Monday morning. Now, good news again. Severe weather purposes, we're not seeing anything for Sunday, just a generic thunderstorm risk, and that will go into Monday and quite possibly into Tuesday as well. But that brings its own problems with it as we go into the course of the next several days out there. Maria DeMarco Stafford, weather in Atoka, hot and humid again over the next several days in Atoka and throughout the rest of the Mid-South. Temperatures will be back in the lower 90s as we go into tomorrow with chances of showers and thunderstorms across much of the area. Amanda K. Kaufman thought today was forecast to be in the high 80s earlier this week. Yes, and that's why these forecast numbers change. You have to tune in every single day to see how these numbers change, and sometimes they change in a very short period of time. So you can't check the forecast out here and expect the numbers 10 days from now to be exactly where they were when you tuned in last time around. That's how much these numbers change on here. That's why we bring these updates to you several times a day. So definitely want to keep track of what's going on out there with these forecasts. We'll bring them to you as much as we can. Savvy Diva Donaldson from Vegas, sunny and 
nice. Well, I'm glad somebody's getting some nice weather out there. Pretty humid out there. Next few days, again, not much changing. We'll be back in the lower 90s for highs, lower to mid 70s for lows. Again, unless something really radically changes, which right now it doesn't look like it's going to. But here's the thing. As we go throughout the next few days, these chances of showers and thunderstorms will continue. So we'll see those every single day, especially in the afternoon and evening, which means as kids get back to school and those extracurricular activities outdoors after school pop up, that's going to be the perfect time for these showers and thunderstorms to come wandering on through. If you see lightning, if you hear thunder at the practices going on, you are done with practice. That's the way it needs to be. And coaches, instructors, band supervisors for marching band practice, Again, they need to be reminded of that because these days it only takes one lightning strike to cause a pretty good tragedy. So again, if you have any plans for outdoors with the kids, you need to monitor that for the weather and make sure everybody knows when thunder roars, go indoors. You might think it's a little bit of an overabundance of caution, but that's a good idea because again, remember that lightning from these storms can strike many miles, 20 to 30 miles away from the parent thunderstorm. And again, you just don't want to take that chance out there. So again, back indoors again, cancel practice, postpone it, wait until the storms have gone on through, or just start again tomorrow. That's going to be one of your best things you can do for safety's sake out there. So again, please use caution, especially as outdoor soccer, football, marching band, whatever practice goes on outside. Please use a lot of caution out there in the course of the next several days, especially with the heat as well. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Now, later on toward next weekend, yes, we are seeing some slightly nicer weather going on, but not by that much. And again, there still will be that chance of a few isolated showers and thunderstorms out there, but we're just not seeing, again, a lot of major amounts of cool downs in this area. Uh, Leanna Beatty, can we see the meteor shower at Overton Park? No, uh, your best bet would be to get as far away from city lights as possible. Anything in and around the metro area, we've got all the sky shine from the lights. We've got pollution, which helps to reflect and scatter that light. So it's very difficult to be able to see the meteors, the really faint ones, in and around the city. So you need to get away from city lights as much as possible. You might see some of the brighter ones out there, but you're going to want to be away from the city lights to make sure that you can see as many of them as possible. And some sources have said this could be a major year for the Perseids, maybe 100 meteors per hour. And that's quite a lot. That's not exactly a meteor storm, but it does, again, look pretty good for that. So again, away from your city lights is going to be your best bet into and around the area. That's going to be, again, your opportunity to see the meteors tonight. And this is the primo meteor shower of the year. It doesn't get much bigger than the Perseids out there. The Lyrids, again, not too bad. The Quadrant not too bad, but usually the Perseids are the best opportunity to see meteors. And again, you're going to watch between to the northeast between about dawn and midnight. So anything after midnight would be your best bet. And again, keeping an eye on the northeast horizon to be able to see what goes on out there. So again, away from city lights is going to be your best bet. Scott Jarvis, 81. Feels like 87 with light winds in Banner, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that weather report from around the area there. Uh, let's see, Tracy Long, I should have went shopping today, rain tomorrow. About the same chances again for tomorrow as what we see for today out there. Doris Morgan, Rancho Cucamonga, California. Welcome to the show. Uh, hot here as well, and with all the fires, I'm sure it's a little smoky out there as well. Memphis in the Mid-South over here, Gulf of Mexico, Eastern Seaboard, and the Caribbean. Got one storm system out ha basically halfway between Africa and South America. It's not a great chance, but remember, we're in that upward slope to the peak of the season in September. A little bit less than a month away before the peak of the season. So this and anything else that happens as the waters continue to warm out here, we need to watch very carefully. Hector passing away from around the area of Hawaii. It's well off to the west of the Hawaiian Islands and heading over toward Guam and eventually Japan, if it survives that long. But right now, it is no threat to Hawaii and little, if anything, expected out of that one there. Wildfire danger in the Mid-South, thankfully, is decently low. We don't have a lot going on where any burn bans are considered. Matter of fact, no burn bans at all for the News Channel 3 viewing area counties. We do have a couple of burn bans, again, back into around Lafayette and Columbia in southwest Arkansas, but that's the only two counties 
anywhere close to the viewing area that are under burn bans at this time. Again, none for Mississippi, none for Arkansas. Good news again, wildfire risk is low to moderate, so we don't have a lot of threat as much as they do out west. So definitely some good news at this point. Maria DeMarco Stafford, major lightning in and around Atoka. We'll get back to Storm Tracker 3S radar here in a minute and take a look at that area where we still have some uh, severe thunderstorms going on. Memphis underscore Tom from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Nice sunrise from earlier this morning. From TN underscore WX, nice sunset from last night from around the Carroll County area from earlier on. And many thanks to Code Crew Memphis for inviting me to be a judge for their hackathon about two weeks ago. Mr. Meka Akwekwe and everybody at Code Crew doing their best to make Memphis and the Mid-South area a premier go-to place for teaching kids about coding, software, and technology. It was a real blessing to be able to see the effort that Mr. Meka and a lot of the group with Code Crew are doing to get this area really in gear with software and coding as the future is code. They do a great job of inspiring the kids and everybody who works with this organization does an amazing job. So thank you very much to Mr. Meka for quoting me on this and putting that on their Instagram and Twitter accounts. More of your weather pictures, again, that's available at wreg.com slash weather. Send them to me at austin.onic at WREG.com and of course on Twitter at Aonic underscore WREG3. Let me go back real quick here for one second, backtracking for just a moment so we can give you an update on what's going on with those storms going in across west central Tennessee. Again, we're watching a severe thunderstorm warning taking place for these storms now crossing the river, heading into and around portions just to the south of Blyville and I-55, and another cluster behind that making its way again across I-55 relatively soon. This is a severe thunderstorm warning. We do not have any indications of any tornadic weather out there, but we will continue again to monitor this for the possibility of anything involving severe weather beyond that. Now, there is the potential. It looks like most of this is going east-southeast, so it doesn't look to be a threat for Shelby County for now, but if more storms start to develop down this direction and we have to be on with severe thunderstorms, storm warnings. We'll break in and let you know a little bit more about what's going on. But so far, this is the main area that we're talking about. And again, for areas around Mississippi County and Arkansas and west central Lauderdale County in Tennessee, that's where we see the severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 845 this evening. So if you're in the path of this west of Ripley, north of Osceola, west of Highway 51. This is where you're going to want to watch out for the possibility of damaging winds, large amounts of rainfall, and maybe the possibility of some hail out there as well. So this is going to be the main thing for right now. Blake Lowry, anything heading towards southern Dyer County? Uh, so far, it looks like everything here is going to miss Dyer County, but that cell just north of Blytheville, if that holds together, that could be in southwestern Dyer County within the hour. But again, a lot of these storms have been pulse-type thunderstorms. They develop, drift, collapse, start back over again as that wave of energy of that collapse spreads out in the atmosphere. So we could see some activity right now. Most of what we're looking at at this point is, again, most of what we're seeing heading away from that particular area. Let me zoom in a little closer on these. And again, you can see the heaviest activity here between Cardwell and Etowa around Big Lake. That's going to be a man into the Blytheville area relatively soon. But so far, again, the good news is this does not appear to be a threat directly to the Memphis metro area at this time, but we will be keeping a close eye on that, so keep it tuned for uh, more information. Uh, Angelita Bonita, there is no such thing as climate change. Wrong. There is definitely a thing as, as uh, that is called climate change, so thank you very much for that opinion on there, and thanks to everybody else for checking on through for right now. Uh, again, we'll keep our eyes on the thunderstorms out there. We'll also keep an eye on the forecast changes coming up throughout the rest of the next several hours and into the weekend. If you have any questions about the forecast, please make certain to join me online where we can keep you updated on Oldies 102.3 and Country 92.5. So again, see more about that information on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. We'll be on the air again tonight at News Channel 3 at 10. Megan Rice has a big day in sports. Kristen Holloway is back with all the day's news. And of course, yours truly will have more information about all the weather across the Mid-South and going into the forecast for the rest of the next couple of days. 
pretty much steam heat out there and not much changing anytime soon. Coming up in about 20 minutes at about 8.45, we'll have more on whether where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones stationed around the world or the country, we'll take a look at various military bases out there and see what the weather's like where you may have friends or loved ones stationed. So tune in on my Facebook page coming up at about 8.45 this evening. Again, you can find me all over social media, so look for me out there. You'll find me someplace and stick around for a lot more. Again, questions, concerns, ideas, anything you'd like to see on here, please let me know at austin.onic at wreg.com. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. Thanks to everybody for checking in from wherever you happen to be tonight, and thank you very much for all the weather reports out there. More coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, and join me and Nina Harrelson live tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak Sunday morning for all the day's latest news, weather, and sports. Thanks for joining us tonight.